in people's lives, there's only maybe half a dozen, seven, eight categories that really matter. Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. But I look at and say, if you look at your body, where you're starting, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there is energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business, show up in your life. That's an area you got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. I mean, you got a ton of money, you got everybody loves you, and your primary emotions are pissed off and frustrated, then your life's pissed off and frustrated. It doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a million people loving you, your life is not great. Relationships, intimate relationships especially, it's where the most juice in life comes from, it's where the most pain comes from most people. It's worth mastering instead of dabbling. You know, really looking at what are you going to do with your time and mastering your time. Instead of having a checklist, you cross it all off, you can mistake movement for achievement. I, I want to squeeze out of that time what matters, that creates value for me and for everyone I care about and love. What about your career or your business and the mastery of that instead of dabbling? Most, most businesses are dabblers. That's why they don't make it. 96%, you know, in any 10 year period of time, 4% make it. That doesn't even mean they're profitable. And it does not mean they're enjoying themselves, right? Or they're getting anybody else to feel good. Really mastering money so that it's it's not a question in your life. You can do and be and give and share as much as you want. You're not stressed about it. You live in a place of abundance. And then spiritually, really, I think, now, I don't tell people what to believe spiritually, but I believe that ultimately, whatever you believe, you got to live it. And it should lead to growing and giving. If you're growing, you feel alive. If you're giving, you feel 10 times more alive. And I think if someone can celebrate and give, then that spiritual state. So to me, those are the areas I look at mastering. You know, business for sure, but it's the areas of life that matter most. And most of where we spend our time doesn't make people feel fulfilled. That's why the average person is not fit and healthy. The average person is not in a relationship where they have tremendous passion. They, you know, I'm not a dummy. I'm not a positive thinker. I know the truth. The average person is not successful in business. The average person is not earning what they want to earn. But you know what? Very few people have those things, but a few do. A few are happy, fulfilled, spiritually alive, financially strong. Their business is growing. They have passionate love affairs. And I'm obsessed with finding the few who do and find out what they do different and teaching to everybody. Learning it for myself and teaching everybody else. Well, in the psychological realm, um, everyone's going to measure themselves differently because everyone values things differently. Some people value success or significance. Some people value love more. Some people value just basic levels of certainty. Um, so when I look at the specific metrics, I really look at uh, metrics of what are the things that need to be measured to know if your life is going to work or not. So I look at it as our whole lives are guided moment to moment by the state we're in. Learning how to change your state not bullshit, not fake, but to go from pissed off, frustrated, freaked out, to back in your center, or creative, or uh, determined, or something that's gonna move you forward, it's gonna create a better quality of life for you and others, that's a critical skill set. So moment to moment, our life's controlled by our states. Yep. You know, if you're in an angry state, you're gonna respond differently than if you're feeling playful. But what controls those states long-term is your model of the world, your worldview. And I look at that as having, as a metric, three things that I look at. I look to see first, what are the targets you're after? The target is everybody has, the, everyone has different goals and dreams and desires. But as I traveled around the world to 100 countries, I started going, holy shit, I'm seeing the same problems. What's underneath it? I began to see that there are these same six human needs that we all have, the same needs. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain you're bored, if you have total variety, you're like freak out. And it's not a balance. It's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. Um, need of, the need for significance, to feel unique, special, important. The need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. Some people value certainty at the top of their list. That's their center of their target. I don't want to do anything unless I know it's going to work. I don't want to do anything unless it's the same. If you change anything, they freak out. If certainty is the number one thing on your list, everyone has the same needs, but if it's number one, I know how your life's gonna be. I can predict the direction of your life and therefore the destination to some extent. If you're driven by love first, you want certainty too, but love is higher, you're gonna behave very differently. And if you're driven by significance, I have to be the one. Your experience in business was trying to be significant by making enough money and being successful enough that you would feel what you really want, which is that feeling of love, what you call uh, 
uh, what would you call camaraderie. it? Camaraderie. Thank you, camaraderie. So that feeling of, it's really love. It's, it's a friendship. It's camaraderie. It's that component. That's what really drives you. And so you figure out how to organize your life where that's the driving force. And now look what you've done. You've flourished and everyone around you is flourishing. So I look to see which of those needs are the top two on your list because they control your life. Yeah. The two that most people have, 90% of the planet, if you said, of all these needs, which one do you really focus on most day to day? Everybody wants love, but who do you focus on? Most people focus on being significant. We live in a Facebook world where people fake their life, put new filters, make it look different than it really is, tell stories that you know are totally full of it to make themselves look good. Because we live in this kind of false world where significance is more important than love. And it separates us. And the other one that we see most often is certainty. People want to be certain before they can do something. You couldn't have started a business like you had if you were absolutely certain before you started. You can never build a business with that. You can never build a great relationship because if it's based on certainty, then everybody's got to stay the same and never change, which means you're never going to grow, which means you're going to be miserable. So my metrics are, I want to find out what's driving you. And I want to see, is it healthy or unhealthy? You can have two people be driven by significance though and do it with a different set of rules. That's the second piece I measured. The beliefs or rules of how to fulfill that target. Once you understand the metrics, using your language, of what's driving you and then the rules or beliefs of what does it take for you to feel loved, it's different for everybody. What does it take for you to feel certain? Some people need a billion dollars, some people just need to trust God. <laughs> you have two different pieces. Maybe it should chunk up to 30,000 feet. Here's my mission. How people have an extraordinary, magnificent life. Yeah. Now, what does that look like? Life on their terms. So your terms are completely different. So your metrics might be, I want to do this in my business, I want to do this in my body, you can be that way. Somebody else might be, I want to be happy no matter what happens. That's my metric. I want to literally be honest that when I start to feel any form of suffering, I kill it like a dead bug and I crush it and I'm back into a beautiful state. You can measure and say, I'm not going to drop below an eight in my life unless I'm freaking sleeping or I'm deciding I'm going to rest. This is where I want to play my game. So it's different for everybody. Sure. But I want to I be more clear about something. An extraordinary life is life on your terms. And there's two parts. Part one to have an extraordinary life is mastering the skill of the science of achievement. How do I take what I envision and make it real? And how do I do that quicker, faster, better, easier? The ability to manifest what you come up with and make it real like you've done with your company, yes. that's a skill set. I spend an unbelievable amount of time helping people do it faster, quicker, better, showing them the shortcuts, just teaching them the strategies, modeling what works. You, you can save yourself a decade. But I would submit to you that having done this for 38 years with you know 50 million people at this stage, I can tell you that the science of achievement, there are a lot of people that are damn good at that, and they still don't have an extraordinary life. They have an extraordinary life. You see it as extraordinary. But I get the phone call from the multi-billionaire who tells me he wants to do this thing on his business, but what he really find out is he's miserable as hell, and he's hoping somehow I'm going to rub off on him on that side too. And so I give him what he asked for, the change in his business, and I also give him what he needs, which is the change inside of him. So the second skill is the art of fulfillment. If you want an extraordinary life, you can't just achieve, you gotta be fulfilled. As simplistic as that sounds, but it's an art. It's not a science. It's a science to making money, come on. Any age, any color, any background, any gender, if you do these things, you'll have an abundance of money. You do these things, you're gonna have too much month at the end of the money, you're gonna have financial stress, right? Body, everyone's biochemically different, but you and I both know there's fundamental rules, laws. There's a science in the body. You violate that science, you're gonna have disease, you're gonna have low energy. You align with that, you're gonna have an abundance of energy. It's gonna affect everything in your life. It's a science. Fulfillment's not like that. Fulfillment is as different as our human beings. You wanna know what God or the universe likes? Look at the jungle, look at the forest. It's diverse, right? So most people think, well, I wanna get that, because they've been modeling somebody else, and that might work on how to achieve something. It'll never work for what to fulfill you. How many people do you know, like you, got what you thought you wanted, and you weren't fulfilled? Right. And that, I always tell people, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure, the ultimate failure. Because if you go at something and you fail, and you're an achiever, you don't fail. You go, I learned something, I'll just try something else. Right. I'm gonna still get there. But when you succeed and you're not happy, you're technically screwed. <laughs> it's just like, you know, what are you gonna do? So. A perfect example of this, I mentioned in the seminar you were there because it hit me about a, what, about a year and a month ago, we lost what I consider a national treasure, Robin Williams. And I asked people, how many of you love Robin Williams? Everybody yeah. raised all around the world, right? 
He made people laugh. People were touched by him. So how good was he at the science of achievement? I mean, he wanted to be a great comedian and make the whole world laugh. He did. He wanted to have his own TV show. He did. He wanted the number one show. He did. He wanted to make movies. He did. He wanted to have an Academy Award for not being funny, dramatic, and he did it. Right? He did it. Yeah. And he said he wanted a beautiful family. He achieved everything, and he hung himself. That's right. And I know recently someone's saying, well, you know, he had dementia, he had drug abuse, he had alcohol abuse most of his life because he made everybody happy but whom? Himself. That's the ultimate failure. So if I had no other message to offer your viewers, and you let me give it to them right now, Please. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe our lives are controlled by one force, decisions. I certainly believe in force greater than myself, call it God if you will, grace, whatever you want to call it, the universe. But I also believe it gives us choices. And the decisions we make control us much more than the conditions we meet. It's not the conditions, it's your decisions. Decisions what to believe, decisions what to do, decisions what to give. I say to people, think about, you know, look back 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, and think of a decision you made. That if you would have made a different decision, you'd have a totally different life today. Better or worse, I don't know, but totally different. In your case, if you'd stayed doing what you're doing, you'd have a lot of money and still been miserable, right? You know? Uh, and probably your great lady over here would be feeling miserable because she loves you so much and she'd be feeling your misery, wanting to figure out what to do. But you made that decision. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're going to live in a beautiful state. What the hell does that mean? It means that you're not going to suffer. It means a beautiful state is that you're going to be happy. But that's only one. Or you're going to feel creative. Or you're going to be passionate. Or you're going to be in awe of something. Or you're going to feel love. Any state that's a beautiful state is really the core essence of who you are without fear.